Welcome to another episode of Two Old Guys Reviewing Great Entertainment. Today, it's Mother of the Bride, a new Netflix feature. And Art and I are here ready to tear it apart. Although I liked it. What did yeah. you think, Art? I liked it as well. And, you know, uh, you know that I like Hallmark movies. Uh, <laughs> this isn't a Hallmark I, movie. I, I was, uh, even though we were watching it on Netflix, I was looking for the little Hallmark thing in the right-hand corner, lower right-hand corner, it wasn't there. But it could it yeah. could have been, except, you know what? It was great. Brooke Shields, it wasn't Blue Lagoon, but she was great. I thought she was terrific. She's, what, in her 60s now, something yeah. like that. Uh, yeah. They had an all-star cast. They had Benjamin Bratt. They had a lot of supporting characters that were recognizable, even if you didn't know their name. Great and, casting. Yeah. Great casting. And, and the daughter, the one who was getting married, uh, was uh, Miranda Cosgrove, who was iCarly. So, iCarly, yeah. Starred on iCarly. She's, yeah. a, she's a big star with the younger generation. Right. Yeah. So, in other words, she's all grown up. So, you know, as, as a boomer, you can relate to, well, this is my kid who grew up because you saw her growing up with my kids and you're having a wedding. Anyway, yeah, it yeah. it was a well well acted, great cast. They had some uh, surprises in there of people that you recognize that you might not have known their names. Uh, so anyway, I it was a it was whatever it was. It was ninety minutes. It was uh, one hundred twenty. Whatever it was, it was good entertainment. My wife and I actually watched it all the way through. Yeah, Let, let's let's do a, a basic uh, recap of the plot. Of course, um, as you pointed out, there had been other. Um, Mother of the Bride movies right. uh, in the past. Did you say Rue McClanahan was in one? Yeah, in 1993, Rue was in it. And you yeah. know what? I didn't look any further, but you know, but there was a whole bunch of the momzilla or the dadzilla kind of uh, sure. uh, uh, yeah. theme of Father of the Mother Bride, Mother Hell, of the yeah. Bride. There were lots of them, but so this was its own take off, and it was yeah. kind of fun. I. I uh, had not known what to expect, quite frankly, mm -hmm. um, and I, I liked it. I, I was attracted to it, really, for the Brooke Shields name, sure. uh, because I think she's a, a pretty good actress, had a wonderful career. She's not all that busy. She's very careful about what she does as she's grown older, but she's always done good, good material, and I think she's very talented yep. um, and certainly a beautiful woman uh, at any age, at every age. Uh, she's been very beautiful, but I kind of didn't know what to expect because I was familiar with Father of the Bride. If right. you remember, I think it was, uh, uh, well, the original Father was... of the Bride in the 1930s with Spencer Tracy. Right. And then Steve, uh, Martin, he was... Steve Martin did a remake. Steve Martin did a wonderful, wonderful remake, which is the one that stuck in my head. Mine too. Uh, so I didn't know what to expect. And you're right. This is this does seem, by comparison to certainly to Father of the Bride, this does seem like a Hallmark movie, yeah. Uh, because it's sweet. Um, the, the she's not really the mother-in-law from Hell. Uh, she she plays a, a woman who uh, whose daughter springs her wedding on her mother. Uh, she there the mother's a Brooke Shields plays a famous scientist. Uh, who's very busy, uh, single mother. And very and very controlling, very, very, very controlling. Very bossy, very mm -hmm. controlling, uh, in charge kind of woman. But her daughter is now working for the Discovery Channel. <laughs> and her mother, her daughter is getting married with only within the month. And it's the deal is that it's got to be on television. It's got to be on the Discovery Channel. It's going to be filmed. And of course, that adds even more pressure to all the pressures that any wedding would have, planning and that kind of thing. Yeah, and of course, uh, by, by the way, let me let me add here because there's no spoil, or you're going to enjoy it anyway. Uh, in all, in many of the mother, father of the bride kind of scenarios, there's an older love interest who shows up, and then a new yeah. younger love interest. It's all in there, uh, but yeah. the real the real twist is uh, the identity of the of the boy that her daughter is marrying. Uh, has a very real connection to her uh, earlier life. I'll leave it at yeah. that. Uh, well, I I don't think we're spoiling it no. to say that that it turns out that Brooke Shields' daughter is marrying the son of her old college flame, her right. original love interest, true love, right. who broke not just broke her heart, stomped on her heart. 
<laughs> and so there's instant resentment. And of course, you know that instant resentment's going to turn to love because this is this is a love movie. It's right. a wonderful romance. And it's very funny. It's got all the jokes and all the pratfalls and all the things you would expect. And maybe, from my taste, a little too much of it. Mm. it, it the movie d dragged on a little bit. Not that I was bored, ready to turn it off at any point, but it was... I won't say slow. It was just predictable. Right. Um, you know, the, they did wonderful job. It's very well produced and it's worth certainly uh, an hour and a half of your time. Uh, and Netflix, I have to credit Netflix for doing what I would call a family movie. You know, there's no bad language in this. There's one scene that's technically maybe nude, but you, not, you don't not, see anything. It's not. Yeah. And, and, uh, it's really a very nice little movie. It's a lot of fun. The acting is just fine. Benjamin Bratt uh, looks great. He's, if you remember him from Law and Order years ago, um, he, he's got six-pack stomach. Brooke Shields looks almost as good by comparison. Uh, it's a really nice movie, um, yep. and I would recommend it. Yeah, so also, um, uh, John and I are going to be doing a lot of these kind of reviews we've done some in the past but we're finding now that that netflix and amazon for instance uh, are doing a lot of original movies and yeah. this is a netflix produced movie this was done for netflix and this is an original yeah yeah so so uh there's lots of good stuff that you can't even see in the theater some of them had a simultaneous theater run so we'll be doing a lot of these but we're finding that there's a lot of quality stuff uh, that's being produced by Amazon and Netflix and other streaming studios that are really yeah. worthy of watching. Certainly there are, and we'll get to some of them along the way, um, a, a series that we would have used to only see on television uh, yeah. that are also generated and only appear on, in these venues. So uh, we've chosen these because most people we know uh, uh, have uh, uh, the ability to get to one of if if you get home delivery by Amazon, you've got Amazon Prime. That's 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 a gimme. And uh, you know, um, Art, you you point out something important. I think uh, in the world of entertainment, at any rate, but it affects us as consumers, as moviegoers, mm -hmm. and that is that Netflix, Amazon, these th these were online studios that you know started by buying other product and putting it up there for you to look at or review or rent or whatever. Now they're not only making their own product, but they're making, and, and, and I think that's why I liked this. Uh, I give credit to Amazon, to uh, Netflix for, for this kind of movie. Because the first movies they started financing, uh, the original movies, were all exciting. They were right. action adventures. They were monster movies. They were thrillers. They were killer. Now they've matured to the point where they can afford to do, I say afford to spread out and uh, attract a different audience, an audience that wants a family friendly movie. They did a lot of kids movies. This right. is kind of a, what I call a family friendly. It's very broad appeal. So it's a sign of maturity for these pay channels. Um, and I think quite frankly, it's a bad sign for the, uh, the movie theaters. Right. And also, it, uh, look, uh, you and I, having grown up with going to the movies and, and first run, I remember standing in line in the first week for some major movies, uh, not so thrilled to do it anymore. But you go to a movie, uh, let's say you just go with your, your one, one other person, your spouse, it's going to be 15 to $20 a piece for tickets. Mm -hmm. It's going to be another 20 to $30 just for soda and popcorn. Okay? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Here, this one happened to be included in the monthly fee of Netflix, but right. we have a couple that we're going to see. We may go to the move to a theater uh, or not. I don't want to mention what they are, upcoming ones. But for four ninety five, dollars uh, you and one other person or 10 other people in your living room. Yeah. Okay. And we have some pretty good delivery systems of screens now. Ours is, uh, what, uh, 65 inches and very crisp yeah. and clear. So it's a nice experience and we can always put it on pause if we have to go out to the bathroom. <laughs> so, there's a lot of advantages of watching at home as opposed to watching on a little TV 
uh, yeah. when all this stuff started with the original Netflix, where it was a Netflix where you would send in a, they'd send you a, 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 a DVD and then you'd send it yeah. back to them. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's really a pretty good experience. So we enjoyed this particular film. I'm going to throw it back up on there so you can see it. It's Netflix, Mother of the Bride. Uh, and I think you'll have a good time. Yeah, brand new this year. Uh, check it out. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.